good day everyone the start of the third quarter is module 5 which is about quadrilaterals these are the things around you that illustrates quadrilaterals to start let us recall on how are you going to name quadrilateral so let us consider this one if we have here a b c and then d how are you going to name this quadrilateral in naming quadrilateral you can start at any vertex you can have clockwise or counterclockwise direction so this specific quadrilateral can be named as quadrilateral a b c d also can be named as quadrilateral b c d a also quadrilateral c d a b and quadrilateral d a b c if you are going to do it on a counterclockwise this can be named as quadrilateral a d c b d c b a C, B, A, D, or quadrilateral B, A, D, C. Parts, the different parts of the quadrilateral are as follows. We have the vertices, the sides, the angles, and the diagonals. If we are going to consider our given quadrilateral hill here, the vertices are, we have point A, we have point B, or vertex B, point C, and point D. And if we are going to take note of the sides of the given quadrilateral, we have here segment or line segment AB. We have line segment BC. We also have line segment CD. And then lastly, we have line segment DA. So these are the four sides. If we talk of angles, here are the four angles. We have here, those are the four angles. One, two, three. 3 and then 4. The four angles are we have angle A, angle B, also we have angle C and angle D. And lastly, we also have the diagonals. Diagonals is defined as line segment that joins two non-consecutive vertices. So the non-consecutive vertices here are point A and point C. And if we join these two non-vertices, the line segment being formed is line segment AC. Yes, this is line segment AC and that is a diagonal. Do we still have another diagonal in our figure? Yes, if we join the vertices B and D, the line segment formed will be diagonal BD. Some terminologies such as adjacent or consecutive, these are of the same meaning. And then we also have opposite. When you say adjacent or consecutive from the word itself, consecutive, ibig sabihin magkasunod. And if you say opposite parts, ibig sabihin hindi magkasunod. If we are going to consider again this, let us name this as QRST, quadrilateral QRST, Pag sinabi nating adjacent parts, and if I ask, let's say, adjacent side, I will be asking for the adjacent sides. These are the consecutive sides. So there are four pairs of adjacent side. The adjacent sides are, we can start with segment QR and segment RS. This is a pair of adjacent side. Magkasunod, consecutive or adjacent side. Another pair, of course, we have segment rs it is also adjacent to it is also adjacent to segment st and also segment st or segment ts is also adjacent to segment tq or segment qt and then lastly our segment tq is also adjacent to segment qr so there are four pairs of adjacent sides and hinahanap naman are adjacent vertices how many pairs do we have yes again we have four adjacent four pairs of adjacent vertices these are q r s t so the adjacent vertices are we have point q and point r are adjacent vertices also we have point r and s we also have point S and point T. We also have point T and point Q. So these are the four pairs of adjacent vertices. And if we are asked for the pairs of adjacent angles, again, there are four pairs of adjacent angles. We have here angle A and angle R. Angle Q, I mean, angle Q and angle R are adjacent vertices. Adjacent R also is adjacent to angle S. 
angle S also is adjacent to angle T and angle T is also adjacent to angle Q. So if you are asked for the adjacent parts or consecutive parts, whether it is sides, vertices, and angle, in a quadrilateral, there are always four pairs of adjacent parts. If consecutive parts are called adjacent parts, the non-consecutive parts, on the other hand, are called opposite parts. So if we will be asking for the opposite sides of our quadrilateral, QRST, the opposite sides are, if we talk of this side line segment QR, it is adjacent to RS and adjacent to QT. And it is non-consecutive to TS. That is why QR and segment TS are considered opposite sides. Kasi ito yung dalawang side na hindi magkasunod or non-consecutive. Now, do we still have another pair of opposite sides? Yes, the other pair is we have segment QT and segment RS. Meron pa ba? Yes, wala na. If we have the opposite sides, there are only two pairs. Unlike in adjacent parts, we have four pairs. Pero kapag opposite parts ang hinahanap, there are always two pairs. Now, if we ask for the opposite vertices, if we ask for the opposite vertices, opposite of point Q is which point? Yes, point Q and point S are opposite. And another pair of opposite vertices, we have point R and point T. And then, of course, we can also name the opposite angles, which are the opposite angle, which is opposite to angle Q. Yes, angle Q is opposite to angle S. And another pair of opposite angles are we have angle R and angle T. Again, do not, do not forget, if you are asked for the consecutive or the adjacent parts, we have four pairs. If you are asked for the opposite parts or the non-consecutive parts, we only, we only have two pairs. Now, let us proceed with the classification of quadrilaterals. This is the schematic diagram of the family tree of a quadrilateral. So, we have here the quadrilateral, all of this figures are considered quadrilateral kasi lahat ng to has four sides. So, we have here the first one. Under the quadrilateral, we have here a trapezoid. We also have the parallelogram and we also have the kite. So, how are we going to describe this? We have the number one, we have trapezoid. Quadrilateral actually are being classified according to the number number of pairs of parallel sides when we say parallel this is the symbol for parallel this means these are lines that will not intersect so bibilangin natin which or how many pairs of opposite sides are actually parallel the first one here is trapezoid if you are going to look at here tingnan nyo, let us name some of the vertices o pangalanan natin if this is trapezoid a b c d now which sides do you think are parallel yes we have here segment a b is parallel to segment d c yung nilagay ko na symbol na to pag nakakita kayo ng symbol na ganyan it means that the two sides are the two sides are parallel. How about AD and BC? Are they parallel? No. Actually, if we are going to extend our sides here, they will intersect. So, this AD and BC are non-parallel. So, if we look at this ABCD, how many pairs of parallel sides do we have here? Yes, there are only one pair of parallel sides. It is because trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Under the trapezoid, we have here number one, we have the right trapezoid, and then we also have the isosceles trapezoid. Why this is considered trapezoid? If you are going to look at here, again, these are the two sides that are parallel. When we say tra right trapezoid, there is one pair of parallel side. It is called right trapezoid because we have here right angle. So if a trapezoid contains a right angle, it is specifically considered a right trapezoid. Trapezoid. 
Another kind of trapezoid is isosceles trapezoid. Again, if we look at here, these are the pairs of these are the pairs of parallel side at isa lang yan. That's why it is a trapezoid. Now, why do you think it is called isosceles trapezoid? From the word isosceles, it means there are two sides that has Equal measure. And if we are going to look at here, sige, pangalanan din natin. We have here A, B, C, D. Which sides do you think are equal or congruent? Yes, we have here side A, D and side B, C are congruent. Again, yung marking na nilagay ko, dalawang ganyan. If you have or if you see that, it means that A, B, it means that A, D rather is congruent to segment BC, which means that these two sides has the same or equal measure. So again, trapezoid, it has one pair of parallel side. If the trapezoid has right angle, it is considered right trapezoid. And if two sides of the trapezoids are equal, then it is called isosceles trapezoid. Another kind of quadrilateral is what we call parallelogram. Let us name first our parallelogram. So for example, this is parallelogram N M N O P. Now, if trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, you look closely at our quadrilateral or parallelogram N O P. Paano sa tingin niyo masasabi na parallelogram is isang quadrilateral? Okay, now if trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, parallelogram on the other hand is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. You are going to notice that segment MN, we have here segment MN is actually parallel to segment PO. And also we have segment MP is actually segment MP is actually parallel to segment NO. So if there are two pairs of parallel sides, then the quadrilateral is called a parallelogram. And under parallelogram, we have here number one, we have rectangle, and then the other one is rhombus. How are you going to differentiate the two? We have rectangle and rhombus. When we say rectangle, this is a parallelogram with, with congruent angles. If you are going to notice, rectangle yan, all sides are right angle. So, ibig sabihin, all the sides measure is 90 degrees. So, a uh, parallelogram with congruent angles is actually called a rectangle. If rectangle has congruent angles, if you are going to look at here, we have here. This marking, based on this marking, it means that rhombus has congruent sides. Again, if you have parallelogram with congruent angles, it is a rectangle. And then if you have a parallelogram with congruent side, it is actually a rhombus. And if you are going to notice, under both rhombus and rectangle is the square. So, yung square under siya pareho ng rhombus and rectangle. Bakit? Because a square actually has congruent sides. Pare-pareho ang sides ng ating, ng ating square. And also, lahat ng angles natin is right angle. So, aside from square has congruent side, it also has congruent angles. No? So, a parallelogram with congruent sides and congruent angles is actually a square. I hope you get it. Pag congruent angles, rectangle. Pag congruent sides, we have rhombus. Pag congruent both sides and angles, we have the square. Bakit nasa ilalim ng rhombus ang square? Kasi nga, pag rhombus, congruent side. E eh, congruent side to, so rhombus din siya. Bakit nasa ilalim ng rectangle ang square? Kasi nga, rectangle kapag congruent angles. E eh, congruent ang angles ng square, so under din siya ng rectangle. And then lastly, we have here the kite. If you are going to look at here, it also has four sides, so it is considered a quadrilateral. This is a kind of quadrilateral as defined is it is a quadrilateral with distinct, we have distinct pairs of pairs of congruent adjacent 
we have congruent adjacent sides. So a quadrilateral or a kite is a quadrilateral with distinct pair of congruent adjacent sides. Actually, dalawa lang. There are two pairs ng adjacent side. Let us consider this figure. Suppose this is ABCD. Let us use ABCD again. If you are going to look at it, wala tayong parallel sides. Hindi siya trapezoid kasi wala hang naman siyang parallel side. At the same time, hindi rin siya parallelogram. None of the sides are actually Parallel. So, hindi siya trapezoid at hindi rin siya parallelogram. Now, ano yung distinct sa ating kite? If you are going to look at here, lagyan natin ng markings. Yes. Based on the markings, we can say that segment AD is congruent to segment AB. These are adjacent sides that are congruent. And also, segment DC is congruent to segment BC. This is another pair of adjacent sides that are congruent. There are only two pairs of congruent adjacent side. Kasi yung AD at saka DC, adjacent din siya, pero hindi siya congruent. Ano? And then also AB and BC, they are also adjacent, but they are not congruent. So, ang description ng kite ay meron siyang dalawang pares ng congruent adjacent sides. So, this is the classification of a quadrilateral. We have here trapezoid, under trapezoid is right trapezoid and isosceles. We also have parallelogram, we have rectangle, rhombus and square, and also we have the so-called kite. Okay, so to clarify, how our quadrilaterals are being classified? Yes, quadrilaterals are classified according to the number of pairs of parallel sides. And again, which quadrilaterals are parallelograms? Okay, we have rectangle, rhombus, and square. So that's it for today. I hope you get it. Thank you for watching.